All right, so here you can see I just ground some hamburger with some onions in the pan. I didn't think you guys needed to be shown how to do that. I use, for our spices, I do Lowry's meat tenderizer, seasoned tenderizer with some pepper, a little garlic. I also put a little curry powder with a little dill. And uh, that's how I season our meat. And then you just let that cook. Once it's browned, I put the uh, lid on it, turn it to low and let the onions just steam so they're nice and car uh, soft since I didn't caramelize them. All right, next one. And they won't be able to see you. So yeah. all, your, all your hand gestures right now. Oh, well, I talk with my hands. They don't need to see that. They're zooming in. There's corn. Can they hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I add corn because like I said, that's our vegetable because I don't like peppers and the kids don't like peppers, but they thought it was disgusting until they took a bite and that corn, nice and crisp, pops in their mouth. It's after your hamburger's done. Then I take a little bit after it's stirred in. Now I use about an 85-15 meat mixture, but you can go uh, more, uh, more fat. Any marinara will work. I just pour a little bit in because you don't want it soupy. Just like um almost like a sloppy a, joe. A paste. Yeah, a little thicker than a sloppy joe. But no, not the greasy sloppy joe. Well, no, because you drain it. And I just let that sit on low. So as you can see, the thickness. Now you could add more, or you don't have to add any, and I'll explain why later. I take foil and line a cookie sheet. You're gonna use egg roll wrappers. And we even use the vegan. But not by choice. That's all that they had. But we don't see a difference, except they don't have the flour added to it like the other ones. And you do want the flour to help. So they were sticking, guys. So, And while I'm prepping, these are prep work. I'll also, um, you tear them apart because they get stuck. And you'll see I have a little bit of a trouble with my nails trying to get those. Because they're so thin, you don't want to rip them. And you could brown your hamburger and all the vegetables the night before, or even two nights before. So, all right, I'm zigging, I'm zip, yeah, what's that called? Zigzag. Layering, I'm doing a zigzag pattern and layering my egg roll wrappers. And there'll be a reason why you'll like see. Like an eight point star. Yep. It's going to be easier for you guys once we uh, get going, so you'll see. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you sit through all. There's usually a between 18 to 20 egg roll wrappers in one container. When the kids were at home, I would make two packages. And then that way, any leftovers, people would go in the middle of the night and grab them. Uh, my kids uh, would like to, in the morning, take them when they walk to school or pack in a, a extra for a snack at lunch. Tim just kept recording. Sorry, guys. I told him to end it. All right, I'm draining since the marinara and the last little bit of grease from the hamburger as it was cooking with the corn and the, so it was nice and thicker. Well, that's a mad daggone video shooting right there. It's the cameraman was on point. <laughs> okay, I'm getting a small bowl of water, just warm water. It doesn't have to be hot, warm, or cold. You can use any water that you want. And you're going to need Kraft cheese singles. I'm dabbing all four corners. You're going to put usually only one spoon and maybe a little extra because the wrappers, you don't want them to be overstuffed, as you can see. You're going to do a postage. You're going to pull that and then rip it backwards. Hold it like an envelope and then add a little bit more water because you want it to have a perfect seal so when it fries, you don't have it unwrap on you. What are you videotaping from the ceiling? Getting top view. Oh, my God. That's that camera work right there, boy. <laughs> As hey. you can see, the onions are nice and clear, condestant, and, and yes, I use a full, but if you're health conscious and you don't want to use a full cup of cheese or you want to use um, low-fat cheese, hey, any you make this your own with the cheese you want. We just prefer American cheddar. American yellow cheese with the full milk. All American over here. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> 
And like I said, there's usually between 18 and 20 egg roll wrappers. So I do two piles because otherwise when you're dabbing the water, you don't want the rest of the other shells to get slimy with all the water that comes through. And you want to get as tight as of a roll as you can without ripping. And your cheese, as you see, you want to put it in the center in the uh, flat against the angle of the the um, okay. egg roll wrapper. Because that way, when it folds over, the cheese melts through the folded edges on the outside. And if you don't want corn, you can add mushrooms, uh, peas, whatever vegetable you your kids like or you Marijuana. guys like. Timothy Fowl. All right. So once they're done, you want to put them in the icebox to chill anywhere from 15 minutes to the following day if you want. Oil, you just you want to get a big pan to put as many as you can. And you don't want to put in the, only enough oil that it covers halfway. I'm putting water in there, a splash, because when it bubbles up, it tells you your oil is nice and hot for you to put these egg rolls hey, in. Don't put a lot like I did and start a grease fire. Yeah. Now, tonight, he put a little too much oil in the pan, so it's going to cover them completely when they're Ooh. all in there. <clears throat> well, I did, but you were bothering me, so I wasn't I get blamed for everything. <laughs> I get blamed for everything. I'm working the camera. <laughs> this was beforehand. And you just layer them in, um, usually two rolls. You could probably fit about 12 in, 12 to, uh, depending on the size of your pan. You might fit them all in. Get that cigarette out of my face. But you don't want to put them into your oil is nice and hot. I don't know if you can cook it. Because if you put them in too soon, they'll sit there in that cold grease and they'll just take on all that grease and make it greasy. And these are not very as greasy as you think. And most people think, oh, you're frying. Yeah. So I put the remainder back in the ice box because as colder that they are, the better they fry up. But here's where I tell you, you can make them in advance, cover them up with ceram wrap, keep them in the ice box. All right. You need a couple of paper towels because you want to soak up any excess oil that comes out of your egg rolls when they come out of the pan. I also turn my oven on to about 175, 180, so that when the first set comes out, I can put them on low heat in the oven and keep them warm till all of them are done. You flip them, you see that golden brown, because you don't want them too brown, because they're going to finish darkening when you take them out and they rest. As you see, I put a little too much grease in, so I can't really see. You only want to do enough to coat halfway, because when you flip them, you're going to get the other half. So you don't need as much grease as I slipped and poured in today, being distracted. It's kind of nerve-wracking having a camera in your face while you're <laughs> cooking for the first It's like me talking to you guys on camera the first time. <laughs> so, but you want to wait till they have that light golden brown crust before you completely flip them over because you want to seal that envelope, that edge that you saw me fold. So you, those go in on the bottom first to keep it all so it fries up that's the opening and it keeps all your mixture in there as they come out you want them to be golden brown or you can make them darker if you like them a lot crunchier but they're going to be crunchy at this rate i can i, I promise you And as you're rearranging the ones that are trying to fit it, you bring them up into the hotter part of the oven so you can bring the remainders from the ice box into the pan. So you kind of finish up pretty close all at once. All right, so I'm going to pause it right here. So if you look where my mouse is at on the left-hand side, you'll see one that looks kind of pregnant. That's because you didn't seal it enough. Yeah, if you don't seal it enough, that's what will happen. It'll explode. And this brown stuff on the screen point you're that's just cheese that has leaked out. That's getting that fried cheese crunch from the pan onto your egg roll. Which is good. Yeah. Well, we like it. Doesn't mean other people like it. Is that really testing? Or is it frozen? Mm -hmm. Can you check?
I told Tim not to make you watch this whole part, guys. Sorry, you're supposed to just do bits because nobody wants to sit around. I mean, for you know. But you see, as he's flipping it, you just want to squeeze that one out extra when it comes out of the pan. Dan said, it "Looks like human fingers boiling in a pot." <laughs> Dan always goes to fingers, boobs, and toes. And you know, the center of your pot, I don't know about you guys on your electric ranges, but usually the center of the pot is the hottest. So that's why you see the ones that were already in there. I moved them to the center. And here's where I'm going to put my oven at 175. Appreciate that, Rex. Oh, Rex, you're so sweet. And there's uh, some of the finished product. Hey, was that Ryder? Caught Ryder in the camera. <laughs> Look, let me back it up. Okay, so there's Ryder right there. Look at him. That dog's been underneath my feet all day. So they're just going to sit in the oven and on warm. And then I pulled it out and finished taking the rest of them out. Like I said, the brown stuff is just like cheese that is leaked out from the edges. And as you see, as they're sitting, they're becoming that golden brown. And I just put them in the oven until you're ready to eat. And here I am cutting them nice and crispy. As you see, I put some marinara on the side. And there's your gooey cheese coming out with the marinara. So you don't even need marinara on the side. That's just extra I put there in case you want to dip it. But it's already in the inside. And it'll be juicy enough that it's, watch, it just runs down. So. Now, pause this for a second. There's another way to do this, too. After you've fried them and they're right here, before you take them, you can do a cookie uh, pan. A cookie pan. Cookie. Is, I'm saying that right. A Did cake pan. A cake pan that you make a 9 by 13 cake in. La layer all the egg rolls flat. Take your marinara sauce. Pour it all lightly all over the top. Sprinkle mozzarella or a three cheese blend. Bake it on 350 till the cheese is nice and melted and the marinara sauce is hot. And then you almost got like a pizza roll enchilada dish too. So you can eat them with a fork and knife or with your fingers. So there you have it. There is my family's favorite go-to in a hurry meal, one of them. And I'm looking forward to all of yours and to try this and tell me what you think about them. So from start to finish, it literally could take you about 45 minutes but if you do like lori said if you do the prep work the day before 20 minutes when you come home take them out of the fridge put them in the in the uh fryer and then you got an easy meal for the next day and if everybody's busy when you fry them like i said put them in the baking pan in the oven sprinkle the cheese over the top and make yourself a pizza roll enchilada yep we've eaten them both ways but as the kids got older, they liked them this way because they can take them with it out to play the next day after school for a snack. So, And this is actually a dish that actually tastes better when it's heated up. Yeah. Usually two of them, 125 in the microwave, two or more is perfect. For some reason, it heats it up just right. So, But they're not as crunchy, though. They are yeah. kind of gooey. 